Ever wondered how a few simple money facts can completely transform lives? These aren't just words. They're snippets from real-life experiences, revealing the hidden power behind understanding and applying them. The experiences that turned into these facts speak volumes about their impact. People who've embraced these principles swear by their effectiveness, yet many of us overlook them in our daily lives. But why haven't you heard these facts before? Even if you have, they might be buried in the recesses of your mind. This video is here to bring them back into your consciousness. Watch full video as we explore the top 15 money lessons that could reshape the way you handle your finances. Stick around till the end, and you'll feel the change within you, even before the video ends. By the time you're done, your approach to money will have shifted, unlocking a whole new way of managing your finances. These tips hold tremendous power, and I'm here to help unleash it. Don't just watch and listen. Experience the change firsthand. Lesson 1. You are not what you earn. Nathaniel Drew, a digital creator and slow world traveler, often highlights the importance of not tying your identity to what you do or the work you create. Similarly, your income or what you earn shouldn't define who you are. You are not solely defined by what you earn. Bill Gates once said, If you are born poor, it's not your mistake. But if you die poor, it's your mistake. This suggests that while circumstances might not always be in our control, how we navigate them and what we make of them is within our power. When people tie their identity closely to their wealth or income, it can lead to unhealthy ego inflation. Those who become rich and adopt a lavish lifestyle shouldn't feel entitled to it just because of their financial status. Conversely, Individuals who associate their worth with a low-paying job or lack of income might find it challenging to break free from that mindset, inhibiting their ability to create opportunities for themselves. Believing that your worth is solely based on what you earn, regardless of whether it's high or low, isn't a healthy mindset. It doesn't lead to positive outcomes. Your income should not become your identity. Instead, Separating your self-worth from your financial status allows for a more balanced and fulfilling life, enabling you to focus on personal growth and meaningful pursuits beyond monetary gain. Lesson 2. Passive income is a worthwhile pursuit. Building wealth solely through a traditional full-time job can be challenging and might not necessarily lead to financial freedom. Enter the concept of passive income which plays a pivotal role in achieving financial independence. Passive income refers to earning money with less ongoing effort, where the initial work or investment continues to generate income without the need for constant active involvement. For instance, think of writing an article or investing in real estate. After putting in the initial effort or investment, you can continue earning money while not actively working. This stands in contrast to the usual scenario where you trade your time and effort directly for money in a regular job. The essence here is to shift from solely toiling hard for money towards making money work hard for you. It involves setting up systems or investments that continue to generate income, allowing for financial stability without being tied to a 9 to 5 job. This approach aligns with Robert Kiyosaki's viewpoint of creating avenues where your money grows independently, granting you greater financial freedom. The idea isn't necessarily to disregard working hard, but rather to recognize the value of creating income streams that operate independently, allowing you the freedom to focus on other pursuits and enjoy a more flexible lifestyle. This pursuit of passive income avenues can lead to a more sustainable and liberated financial future. Lesson 3. There's more than one way to invest. When people talk about investing, it's often associated with the stock market or traditional methods like a 401k. While these methods, which even Warren Buffett used to amass his wealth, are effective, they're not the only paths to financial growth. Entrepreneurship and investing in various avenues such as companies, startups, personal ventures, 
and even supporting friends initiatives are also fantastic ways to build wealth in the long run. It's about finding an investment strategy that resonates with you and aligns with your objectives. The key lies in investing money that exceeds what you need for your immediate expenses, ensuring you're not risking essential funds required for your basic needs. Moreover, investing in ventures with obvious potential for success can be considered a safe investment, provided it aligns with your risk tolerance and financial goals. Ultimately, the message here is to explore diverse investment opportunities beyond traditional methods, finding what suits you best, and then leveraging those strategies to work in your favor. Whether it's investing in innovative companies, nurturing startups, fostering personal projects, or supporting ventures you believe in, these avenues offer opportunities for long-term financial growth and success. Lesson 4 Money is a resource to use wisely. Money is often compared to energy because it signifies the culmination of our hard work, knowledge, and dedication invested in various endeavors. It serves as a tangible marker of the value we bring to our work or the marketplace. Consequently, it's natural to aspire for financial compensation that aligns with the contributions we make. Managing money effectively involves creating a budget, an intentional plan that dictates where your funds should be allocated rather than being left wondering where it disappeared. It's a crucial step in gaining control over your finances and ensuring that your resources are used purposefully. Understanding money as a resource is essential. It's not merely a currency to accumulate, but a tool that opens doors to opportunities. Rather than amassing wealth for the sake of it, individuals can wield their financial resources deliberately. This means making conscious decisions about how money is utilized, whether it's for personal growth, investing in ventures, or supporting causes aligned with one's values. Superficial spending, such as buying items solely to display wealth, often lacks depth and meaning. Redirecting those funds towards meaningful endeavors, be it philanthropy, self-improvement through educational experiences like conferences or coaching or making a positive impact in the world can provide greater fulfillment and lasting significance. It's noteworthy that even the wealthiest individuals adhere to prudent spending practices. They meticulously budget, understand where their money is being allocated, and make judicious decisions regarding their expenditures. Adopting this mindset of astute resource management transcends wealth brackets, proving beneficial for anyone seeking financial stability and fulfillment. Ultimately, money represents more than mere wealth. It's a tool that, when managed thoughtfully, can contribute to personal development, positive societal change, and a sense of purpose beyond financial gain. Lesson 5. Having money isn't the goal. The perception around making money can indeed carry some stigma, but it's crucial to reframe that perspective. You are a badass at making money challenges the belief that pursuing wealth is inherently negative. It emphasizes that desiring financial prosperity isn't wrong as long as the intentions behind earning money are rooted in positive, purposeful motives. Jen Sincero's definition of richness extends beyond mere material possessions, encompassing the ability to afford experiences that enrich and align with one's most authentic life. It's not about accumulating wealth for superficial reasons like showing off or obtaining extravagant things, as those goals lack depth and meaning. The singer-songwriter Ben Rector aptly highlights that making money isn't easy and it's not a direct pathway to happiness. However, the focus shouldn't solely be on making money. Rather, it should revolve around the purpose behind earning it. Consider this. What if the primary goal of accumulating wealth was to use it as a force for good? Whether it's establishing charities, improving conditions in third world countries, or dedicating time to create inspiring content for free, these motives elevate the purpose of making money beyond personal gain. 
Before embarking on the journey to financial freedom, it's crucial to establish a clear why. This why should stem from meaningful intentions, driving one to utilize money for purposes that contribute positively to society or make a difference in the lives of others. It's not merely about making money. It's about using that wealth to achieve something impactful and valuable beyond oneself. Lesson 6. Think bigger. Income is a crucial factor in building and sustaining wealth, often overlooked amidst discussions about wealth and riches. Grant Cardone emphasizes a transformative mindset, the 10x mindset, urging individuals to think and act drastically differently from their previous approaches to progress in their endeavors. This mindset shift involves challenging conventional thinking and setting significantly higher goals than ever before. It's about amplifying one's mindset, accelerating efforts, and applying increased intensity and determination to achieve greater outcomes. Jen Sincero, Tim Ferriss, and various other authors echo this sentiment of adopting an amplified mindset. At its core, this concept aligns with Henry Ford's quote, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. It's about the power of belief and the influence it has on outcomes. If someone believes they're limited to a certain income level, that belief can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Conversely, believing in the possibility of achieving significantly higher financial goals can lead to actions aligned with that belief. An exercise involves setting monetary goals and then amplifying them by tenfold. For instance, if someone aims to earn an additional dollar $1,000 this month, they could set a new goal of striving for $10,000. While reaching that exact figure might not happen, the point is to stretch one's thinking and ambition. By aiming higher, even if the ultimate result doesn't reach the multiplied goal, the individual could still surpass their initial target significantly. This mindset shift allows for expanded horizons and pushes individuals beyond their perceived limitations. It encourages aiming higher, thereby potentially achieving more than if one had stuck to a smaller, more limited goal. Ultimately, by thinking bigger and setting higher aspirations, even the pursuit itself can lead to greater achievements than initially envisioned. Lesson 7. Money doesn't have to be a taboo topic. So, while I was discussing the launch of my recent book with a friend, she leaned in and asked me directly how much money I had made from it. Initially, I felt a moment of surprise because talking about finances can often be considered a private matter, especially with someone outside my close circle. However, given that she was not just a friend but also a fellow entrepreneur, I didn't feel uncomfortable sharing that information. It's interesting because societal norms often dictate that discussing money is taboo, but in certain contexts, like with friends who share similar interests or professional backgrounds, it can actually be quite beneficial. In this case, I saw it as an opportunity to exchange insights, learn from each other's experiences, and perhaps even offer guidance or lessons learned from my own journey. I believe that openly discussing finances with the right people can be empowering. It allows us to break down barriers, learn negotiation skills, understand different financial strategies, and ultimately grow collectively. It's essential to create environments where discussions about money aren't stigmatized, but rather seen as an opportunity for growth and knowledge sharing among peers. Lesson 8. If it's valuable, people will buy it. When diving into the world of creating, selling, and promoting an online course, it can feel like there's a barrage of negativity and warnings about potential failure. Amidst this, you've discovered a fundamental truth. Not every course out there is truly valuable. However, you strongly believe that when you invest time, effort, and expertise into something that genuinely adds value, people will recognize its worth. Warren Buffett's famous quote, price is what you pay, value is what you get, resonates profoundly in this context. 
You understand that offering something of real substance and worth is key. It's not just about putting content out there, but ensuring it's worthwhile, reasonably priced, and delivers on the promises made to learners. Your philosophy revolves around creating courses that stand out, not just in content, but in the transformation they can bring about in learners' lives. You acknowledge that delivering quality isn't just about what you're offering. It's also about the experience, support, and practical application you provide. In this journey, you advocate for leveraging your unique resources, honing your talents and pouring dedication into crafting exceptional products or services. You recognize that focusing on low quality, cheaper alternatives isn't where your value lies. Instead, you're determined to harness your inner worth, utilize your skills to create remarkable educational content and rightfully expect acknowledgement and compensation that align with the value you bring forth. By doing so, you attract a community of learners who appreciate the depth, authenticity, and impact of your courses. Your emphasis on genuine worth over mere price makes your offering stand out, resonating deeply with those seeking substantial learning experiences. Lesson 9. There's enough for everyone. The idea of reframing our relationship with money is fascinating. You've highlighted a perspective that challenges the notion of taking money as a negative act, especially when you offer a service or product worth $100 but charge only $70. In this scenario, allowing someone to underpay you can be seen as them cheating you with your permission. It's empowering to recognize your worth and the value of what you offer. By not allowing others to shortchange you, you uphold the value of your work. This mindset shift acknowledges that you deserve fair compensation for your efforts. Moreover, when you earn more, it opens doors to opportunities that can impact not just your life, but also the lives of others. You can contribute to causes, charities, and personal growth in ways that might not be accessible to those contributing to your income. It's about realizing that wealth allows for more than just personal gain. It enables a capacity for positive impact and growth, essentially becoming a vehicle for change. The analogy to Robin Hood is intriguing. It suggests a redistribution of resources, taking money from one place and directing it to a better cause, all while ensuring that those contributing are doing so willingly and without deprivation. Lastly, the notion that there's enough wealth in the world for everyone to prosper is thought-provoking. It highlights the potential for a more equitable distribution of resources and challenges the scarcity mindset often associated with money. By embracing this mindset, it becomes not just about earning money, but about using it purposefully to create a more meaningful and impactful existence for oneself and others. Lesson 10. It's not that hard to get rich. Achieving financial success often requires significant effort. However, defining what it means to be rich is subjective. It's crucial to set your own goals and envision a clear path from where you are to where you want to be. Often, the steps needed to reach those goals might seem surprisingly few when you break them down. Consider writing a book a process involving a concept, outlining, drafting, refining through editing, and finally, publishing. Despite the complexities, the core steps are straightforward. This simplicity applies to various endeavors like creating an online course or starting a business. Understanding and following these steps can make seemingly daunting tasks more manageable. Jen Sincero's quote, what you can and can't afford is all in your mind resonates here. It's about challenging limiting beliefs and recognizing that many obstacles we perceive might exist in our minds rather than in reality. Undoubtedly, pursuing these projects involves overcoming obstacles, but the fundamental process remains simple. By holding on to the essence of these straightforward steps, you can navigate through challenges more effectively. Understanding the simplicity beneath the complexity helps in overcoming hurdles 
and staying focused on the achievable steps toward your goals. Lesson 11. You're going to have to invest. Tony Robbins brings up a crucial point. The idea that relying solely on earning money through work might not lead to significant wealth. While working hard and earning a good paycheck are important, they might not necessarily pave the way to achieving substantial financial dreams. The concept of merely saving money is limited when it comes to amassing significant wealth. Even if someone manages to land a high-paying job, the continuous inflow of millions needed for true financial freedom might not come solely from that source. Moreover, dedicating every waking hour to work for massive compensation might lead to a life consumed by professional endeavors, which might not align with personal aspirations. Surprisingly, there are cases where individuals making substantial amounts of money still struggle to maintain financial stability. This phenomenon occurs when lavish spending habits or a lack of financial planning counteract the large earnings, resulting in a living paycheck to paycheck scenario. Investing emerges as a critical solution. It's not just about stashing away money. It's about strategically putting money into ventures that align with personal interests and provide tangible returns. However, there's a recurring cycle where individuals making substantial incomes often end up spending just as extravagantly, limiting their ability to build sustainable wealth. This cycle highlights the necessity of not just earning, but also understanding the importance of managing, saving, and strategically growing money through investment to secure a more financially stable future. Lesson 12. Contentment is key. The notion that money alone can't buy happiness is a prevalent theme in many finance books, and for a good reason. Often, achieving greater income doesn't necessarily equate to increased happiness unless there's contentment and fulfillment before the wealth accumulation process begins. The crucial insight here is not allowing money to become the sole yardstick for mental well-being. Consider a scenario where someone enters a financial venture from a place of sadness and dissatisfaction due to financial struggles. If, magically, they earn a million dollars, they might splurge on cars and a lavish house. However, without a fundamental change in their mindset, the money might quickly disappear and the individual may revert to feeling unhappy despite material possessions. Conversely, someone content and clear about their desires sees money as a tool rather than an end goal. They might earn a million dollars doing work they enjoy, remaining content regardless of the outcome or the income generated. Their approach to spending this wealth would be different. They'd invest in things that sustainably contribute to their mental well-being. Rather than indulging in material goods that lose their appeal quickly, they'd invest in a decent house with amenities that foster quality family time, like a pool for their children. It's about recognizing how certain investments, like a family-friendly home, contribute to long-term contentment and happiness. Additionally, they might prioritize investments in personal health, like a Peloton bike or a personal trainer, understanding that physical well-being significantly impacts mental health and happiness. This choice reflects an investment in self-improvement and contentment over materialistic consumerism. Robert Kiyosaki's quote underlines the power of our internal dialogue and mindset. It's not just about what we express outwardly, but the thoughts and beliefs we harbor within ourselves that truly shape our lives. Ultimately, it's about prioritizing contentment, purpose-driven investments, and self-improvement over fleeting material possessions as a pathway to sustainable happiness and well-being. Lesson 13. Don't work for money. The accumulation of wealth, whether large or small, often demands significant effort. However, this precept emphasizes the importance of not allowing money to become the master of our lives. Instead, it's about taking control and mastering money as a tool rather than letting it control us. Tony Robbins's quote encapsulates this idea well. 
You either master money or, on some level, money masters you. It highlights the notion that if we don't take charge of our relationship with money, it can start dictating our decisions and even our lives. It's crucial to constantly monitor our intentions when it comes to earning money. If the sole motivation behind our relentless efforts is merely to amass wealth or to chase after more money, it's essential to pause and reevaluate our reasons. The wisdom lies in understanding that people and the universe operate on a deeper level of intelligence. Pursuing something solely for the sake of monetary gain might not align with our truest and most fulfilling aspirations. It's a reminder that working solely for money's sake might not lead to a sense of fulfillment or genuine satisfaction. Ultimately, the essence lies in seeking better reasons and motivations for our endeavors. It's about understanding that while money is important, pursuing endeavors solely for monetary gain might not lead to a sense of purpose or fulfillment in the long run. Instead, aligning our pursuits with deeper values and meaningful goals ensures that our efforts are guided by more substantial and fulfilling reasons than just financial gain. Lesson 14. Let money work for you. The idea is about how your money isn't just something you have. It's a tool that can help you in different ways. Make sure your money is always doing something useful for you, like having a job. Instead of just saving money without any clear purpose, give it a specific task. For example, if you want to save money for emergencies or safety, put it in a jar or a special bank account marked for that purpose. This way, your money isn't just sitting there. It's doing a job like being a safety net for you. There's a saying that if you believe you can only be happy when you have something, you're making that thing too important. Money shouldn't be the only thing that makes you happy. It's important, but it's not everything. Here's a cool trick. Some apps like Chick-fil-A or Starbucks give you rewards or points when you use them. This means your money is doing more than just buying things. It's getting you extra stuff. By seeing money as a resource that can bring more value to your life, you're using it smartly. Let your money work for you by using it in ways that bring you benefits and make your life better. Lesson 15. Being rich is relative. This precept comes from personal observations rather than someone else's advice. It's about a method I've noticed successful people using, and it involves a simple yet powerful approach, writing down everything you want. Imagine listing out everything you desire, whether it's a private island, a specific car, like my dream car, a used green Jeep, or a new home for your family. Write down what each of these things costs. Now here's the interesting part. Being rich doesn't mean having the same things for everyone. It's about having enough money to buy all those things you've listed and still feeling financially free and secure. So, your definition of being rich is entirely up to you. If you don't need millions to be content, then that's okay. Your version of richness might mean having a certain income that lets you afford what you truly want, and that's perfectly valid. The key is to define what being rich means to you and work towards that goal relentlessly and without apology. If a six-figure income allows you to get everything you desire, then there's no need to stress about making more than that. Remember, being rich is a personal thing, and it's about achieving the kind of life that makes you happy. So pick a definition of richness that suits you best and go after it with determination. Best of luck as you build the life that feels rich and fulfilling to you. Your worth goes far beyond one aspect. Tell us boldly, what's that one thing in your life that absolutely doesn't define your true value? Share your empowering thoughts in the comments and let's celebrate the diverse dimensions of our worth together. I recommend you watch the next video in our series, don't hesitate to share this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in my next video.